Hello people, in this video we want to look at the detection of viral growth in cell cultures. So basically, you took a cell line in that you tried to culture virus. Now you want to detect that the virus has grown in that cell line. So how do you detect? So you have these methods of detection of the viral growth in cell cultures. They are like cytopathic effect, viral interference, heme absorption, direct immunofluorescence assay, immuno peroxidase staining, electron microscopy and virus gene detection. So all these will help you to do what guys? It will help you to detect the growth of the virus in the cell line. So exactly where we are, you know, we are in this topic in virology under general features of virus, we are looking at the cultivation of virus or isolation of virus. This is a very important topic. Now, we saw in cultivation of virus that we can do animal inoculation, egg inoculation, tissue cultures. In that we saw organ culture, explant culture and cell line. So we are now uh, in this one, detection of the viral growth in cell culture. So that is what we, ha we are doing, right? How exactly these cell lines are prepared, like uh, you know that you saw you will take the tissue, then you will try to use some proteo lytic enzymes to break this tissue into individual cells. Then you will put these individual cells on a viral growth medium which will have a lot of glucose, vitamins, um, amino acids etc. Then you will maintain the pH of it in a normal uh, 7.2 to 7.4 is the pH right. You will maintain it there. Then you will use phenol red indicator. Then you will put this viral growth media with these individual cells into a tissue culture flask and then incubate it. This uh, will have carbon dioxide. You can either keep it stationary or on, or on a roller and then it will give a mono layer sheet. Okay. So this is how you prepare a cell line. So using this cell line on this you will grow the virus. This is only preparation of the cell line. There is no virus in this as of now. Then you will put the specimen and you will try to culture the virus. So there are uh, so many types of cell lines. We saw that there is primary cell line, secondary or deployed cell line. Then you have the Continuous cell line which is cancerous cell where you have immortal haploid cells. Okay, so you saw HeLa, Hep2, so many, McCoy, so many types of cell lines. Vero cell line is used to make the um, rabies vaccine. It's called as Varavit monkey kidney cell line, right? And you saw BHK that is baby hamster kidney cell line. Okay, then now we are coming to the Detection of the viral growth in the cell culture. So how will you detect? So basically you can detect by seeing the cytopathic effect of the virus. As soon as you see the cells and you see there is some uh, problem for these cells because of the virus. That is the cytopathic effect. So that time you can detect the virus. Okay, let us look at the details of the cytopathic effect. So basically it is the morphological change in the cell because of the virus. Okay, you can see it under light microscope itself. What are the types of cytopath cytopathic effect? Not all viruses are cytopathic. Remember, some cells, uh, some viruses are cytopathic like poliovirus, enteroviruses. They uh, make the cells into leaf-like crenation. There will be rapid crenation and degeneration of the entire cell sheet. Entire cell sheet, it will damage this polio. How they will look? Like leaf. Leaf-like degeneration will be there. Rapid. Measles virus, uh, respiratory syncytial virus and herpes simplex virus will produce syncytium or multinucleated joint cell. This will be the cytopathic effect. Okay. Coming to herpes simplex virus, it produces this type of ballooning, rounding and ballooning of the cell line. Cytoplasmic vacuolations, you can see a vacuole here. Cytoplasmic vacuolations are produced by the simian vacuolating virus. Okay. Adenovirus, which is a DNA virus, it produces grape-like, uh, you know, granular clumps, large granular clumps resembling bunches of grapes that is produced by adenovirus. So these are the cytopathic effects, very, very important. They will ask you this in the exam, viral cytopathic effects. You should write this, okay? Now let us say that uh, it is not a cytopathic virus. So if it is not a cytopathic virus, then let's continue. We can try checking it with viral interference. Viral interference means one virus will not an allow another type of virus to grow. Like rubella is a non-cytopathic virus. It will not allow, it will not allow enteroviruses to 
grow. It will not allow enteroviruses to replicate. Okay. So let us say polio. It rubella will not allow polio or enteroviruses to grow. Just by seeing this, you will be able to see that it is rubella virus. So it is non-cytopathic and it will not allow to grow uh, enteroviruses. It's interfering with the other viruses group. Now you can detect that it is some other virus could be rubella. Then you have heme adsorption. Now heme adsorption especially in influenza is a good example. Now you know how influenza is. Let us say this is influenza. On its envelope you have this kind of um, <clears throat> envelope proteins, glycoproteins you have. Like triangle shaped protein you have that is hemagglutinin antigen then you have the neuroaminidase uh, what is this neuroaminidase antigen so these antigens are present on this influenza virus influenza virus is a eight segmented rna virus it's a orthomyxovirus remember influenza virus now this hemagglutinin uh, antigen which is present on the influenza it will produce heme adsorption so basically when you put this influenza virus in growth cell lines right and you put some guinea pig erythrocytes so erythrocytes of this rodent it's not a pig if you put the rbcs of this rodent into the culture you can see that these erythrocytes are absorbed okay to the surface of the infected cell lines okay this is called as heme adsorption that's all so if you have seen, uh, if you see our influenza virus video, in that you will be able to see this uh, HA protein and NA protein on the influenza virus envelope. Okay, so is heme adsorption way of detecting viral growth, uh, is that clear for you? It's fine, right? Shall we move on? So we have to look at the viral growth detection. So what and all we saw till now? Cytopathic effect we have seen. We saw viral interference. We have seen heme adsorption. Still what and all is left? Direct immunofluorescence assay, immunoperoxidase staining, electron microscopy and last one is viral gene detection. Correct? So now shall we go on to this one? DI. What is that? Direct immunofluorescence assay. assay. Direct immunofluorescence assay. So direct immunofluorescence assay basically you will um, take the infected the virus infected cells, mount it on a slide and stain it with specific antibodies tagged with fluorescent dye and view it under the fluorescent microscope and you will be able to detect the presence of the antigens on the surface of the infected cells. As simple as that, right? So you will just uh, take these uh, infected cells, tag them, put a fluorescent dye, put, uh, stain them with specific antibodies. So if the antigen is present, you will be able to see them under the fluorescent microscope. As simple as that. Now coming to immunoperoxidase staining. Guess how is it going so far? Okay, just take a wake up call. We are moving to immunoperoxidase staining. Immunoperoxidase staining, the cells coated with viral antigens. Okay, again the same thing, the cells which have these viral antigens, they are stained with immunoperoxidase tagged specific antibodies and viewed under the light microscope. That's all. Here you are using light microscope, here you used the fluorescent microscope in immunoperoxidase staining, you are using immunoperoxidase uh, tagged antibody, antibodies to detect the antigens, that's all. Electron microscope, nothing much to explain here, it is a very very high resolution microscope, okay. So what can you see there? Viruses itself we can demonstrate. Now coming to virus gene detection, this is going to the level of uh, the nucleic acid, so you can use PCR on or probes, nucleic acid probes to detect the virus gene itself. This will be very, very specific, right? You're detecting the gene itself. So that was about the detection of the viral growth in cell cultures, a pretty small video. Hope you have uh, liked this video and you will be able to explain in the exam what exactly cytopathic effects are, what viral interference is, what heme adsorption is, what direct immunofluorescence assay is what immunoperoxidase staining is, what electron microscope is and virus gene detection. So this completes uh, the cultivation of viruses or isolation of virus uh, part of the series. This video completes. Okay, We will meet you in the next video. Take rest and come back for the next video. Bye-bye.